here is the lack of actually Maridon counters from Nick's team. No Rillaboom to set up that grass terrain to shut off the electric terrain. But here we go into our first match here. We are seeing that Chi Yu Gothitelle lead versus the Maridon and Iron Hands lead. I'm gonna swap these teams. Just for <laughs> nice, keep it consistent. I keep it consistent. That. Gothitelle again. Competitive viability side. Just looking at the Pokemon, the, the moves, the aesthetic. I love Gothitelle. I'm very excited to see this Pokemon making its debut here today. And paired up with Chi Yu, is there a specific thing you're looking out for that make these Mons work well together, or is it just uh, something of circumstance? I think Chi Yu is just here to do damage, and Gothitelle is here to make sure things can't run away from Chi Yu. It's got that choice card. It is going to look for that attack really quickly. And Gothitelle, as we know, is a, actually a regional winning Pokemon. Wolfie has, bring Gothitelle to many has brought Gothitelle to tournaments and has won with it. So it's interesting to see. We're seeing the Terra, er, Terra Ground on the Chiyu to actually block a lot of those electric type attacks that are going to come out from this the other side of the field. Uh, so it seems that this uh, Chiyu is basically anti-electric. With that Terra Blast as Terra well, Blast, Terra Ground. That's going to be massive out of space. Amorino goes down. With the special defense reduction, plus the super effectivity, plus Chiyu's stats are nothing to scoff at. It's no. really good. That is not surprising. Honestly, I can't, I can't say I'm surprised to see that come out. Turn one, we're going to see Maridon go down immediately. And we're going to see the Ursuluna come out in response. Yeah, and I think that's what we have to watch out for Chiyu here. Is Chiyu, if it's Terra Ground, Maridons are uh, pretty scared of it, I'd have to say. And that Gothel locked it in place, so really, the Maridon didn't have Protect, that Maridon was sort of forced to take that blow. You know what I'm also realizing? Tell me, is there a single situation where you don't want that to happen? Like, it doesn't matter that, of course, it's an electric type, so it's going to do even more, but if that was a water type, if that was, uh, I don't know, psychic type, it doesn't matter. You're still going to do a lot of damage and might even knock it out. So it's a counter, but it's also very good against everything else. Yeah, I mean, we did see Terra Ghost Chiyu in our last matchup, so now we're seeing the Terra Ground. We're seeing how versatile Chiyu is with that Terra Block. Yeah. We're seeing the Terra up onto the Iron Hands to go into that Ground type, or go into that Water type. Probably feeling the Terra Blast Ground type move. I'm not surprised. It now perfectly walls Chiyu here. Here is the Helping Hand. This, I would not be surprised if we see another KO here onto the Ursaluna, even if it doesn't go. It does go for the Terra Blast once more. Whether it's going to go into the Iron Hands, yes, it's going to target that one with the Helping Hand and the Special Damage Reduction. It's actually not, that's a, that's really impressive how tanky Iron Hands is. Looking at his stats right now, I'm not surprised, 231. No. Iron Hands is a very bulky Pokemon yeah. and knocks out the Chiyu, gets the drain, with the drain punch. It is now probably gonna go back, actually does not get as much health as I thought it would. Still gets a good bit of health there. Heals back just up a little bit and now Chiyu is down. Chiyu knocked out, so that's just heavy hitter for heavy hitter. But with Terrapagos in the back line, uh, Raging Bolt gonna be coming out next. I like that strategy. Keep your Terrapagos in the back pocket, but seems still deciding here. Maybe not. Maybe he is gonna commit for something else. In either case, both of these competitors, uh, I'm gonna stick with the thematic word, both of these trainers doing a lot of great work to even out the playing field for themselves. The first turns here coming out are gonna be very strong for both of them giving themselves a strong lead, and now you just gotta make the most with the remnants. Yeah, I think we're also seeing how different even Raging Bull can be played. In the last set, we saw that Calm Mindset. In this set, we are seeing that Electroweb move set. Mm. Electroweb trying to slow things down, try to slow down the battle. Volt Switch to switch out easier. It still has Thunderclap, and it's still got Draco, it's got Draco Meter to do a ton of damage. So these Raging Bolt sets are very diverse as well. So I'm now trying to figure out what the speed differences are here are gonna be looking like. So we got the Ursaluna and the Iron Hands out. You might not even need the Electro Web. And with the Helping Hands, I was thinking, can you go for a Helping Hands play? And it seems to be the case. With the Electro Web is a spread move, correct? Yes, Electro Web so is a spread move. Might even go for that still. We're going for the Bolt Switch. Like that. To does get the knockout yeah. and now can switch into, my assumption is that Terrapagos. What a good switch there. And again, this is where having faith in your Pokemon to do what you want them to do, it pays off in dividends. You can't hesitate too much, or else you'll give openings to your opponent where you really shouldn't have any. Uh, so that's gonna be Iron Hands out as well. Terrapo Ghost is gonna be coming out. Terra Shift coming to play. Beautiful transformation now. And now with Rowan down to his last Pokemon, 
Ferrograph is going to be that last Pokemon. And while it's no, it's no Maridon, it's still a threat. Yeah, Ferrograph, Ferrograph, Blood Moon, Ursuna will always be a threat if they can get that Trick Room off. The question now is, are we going to see that Helping Hand into the Terra Blast oh, Star Storm, ton, ton. which would do a ton of damage? The, but we are going to see actually the Trick Room into the Hyper Beam. The oh, so uh, wait, Ferrograph just selected Hyper Beam, you're saying? Or is this uh, Rapagos is going Hyper Beam? Okay. Oh, that is something to to note. We are out of Terra. We did see uh, Nick use his Terra earlier, so he does not have it. Oh! Terror, but the Hyper Beam knocks out the Ursa Luna. That's a lot more damage than I was expecting. That is a ton of damage. I mean, Hyper Beam, again, you're looking at that 150 special, base special attack. It does a lot of damage. It's something you don't see a lot in competitive. But now that it's here and you can use it, the Terra Blast and the Frigraph into the Terra Shell. Terra Shell is an interesting move. It'll make any of the first hits do not very effective damage. And while that's definitely helpful here, it really is just going to stall the inevitable as now we're going to see the surrender coming out from Rowan. Nick had such a great momentum push starting things off. I really like how he kind of took control of that battle. Like I said, that first game felt like we were looking at singles in VGC, but... Now it feels like we're in VGC again, where every turn something's getting knocked out. This yeah. is what happens when you don't have Incineroar and Amoongus kind of everywhere causing problems. Yeah, this was a very explosive battle, and really, Nick got off to a great start with that Gothitel Chiu lead. Is it meant Maradon couldn't do anything, and Maradon was forced to just sit there and take the full power attack? So it'll be interesting to see what happens going forward. How does Rowan adapt? Who does Rowan lead in instead now? Uh, I would very much expect to see, I mean, yeah, your Maridon is basically hard countered by one of the most potent strikers on your opponent's team. It is a little bit, you don't want to just not take your Maridon, but at the same time, you might. It's or you, At the very least, I don't think you want to lead with it. I think you want to find an opportunity to switch it in. But then again, um, will you even have that opportunity to switch it in? Can you knock out that Chiyu before you can find an opportunity to switch in your Maridon or really get forced to beforehand? There's a lot of things you got to be worried about in a situation like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, this is the first battle. These Both these players are sort of fingering each other out, doing this little dance of what's going to happen. And now we'll go into the second game. I wouldn't be shocked if he doesn't lean Maridon. Yeah. I think you we could see... The Ursula Blood Moon lead first here. That's a really powerful lead. Those are two very powerful Pokemon that really, once he gets the Trick Room set up, be hard for a lot of these other Pokemon on Nick's team who don't really want to work in Trick Room. I wouldn't be surprised as well um, if you want to go for something a little bit more flexible. Seeing the Urshifu come out too, um, if you're expecting some switches on, uh, on Rowan's side of things, I feel like that Urshifu... Of course, going through Protect as well is always nice, but it is just such a potent hitter. There's very few, very few situations where Urshifu's hitting into something and it's not knocking it out or at least taking it down to half. So you want something reliable and you want something flexible with honestly good typings defensively with decent enough bulk. You can't go wrong with Urshifu, but it seems we're going to be leading this time uh, we'll with a Whimsicott versus Chiyu and Terrapagos. This is a very interesting lead here. <laughs> very small Pokemon to lead. Yeah, it's a very small Pokemon Trapper goes there, but it only gets into these bigger Pokemon as it keeps going up this terrestrialization chart. The Whimsicott here is really interesting. It's got that Encore move. Encore is a really interesting tech mm, move where yep. if you're forced to make a more defensive play turn one, that Whimsicott will lock in that Encore and force you not to be able to do anything. So a game like this here, okay, so he did end up taking the Whimsicott himself as well as his Raging Bolt on the side of Nick. That's what we're going to be seeing here, but what Rowan took, can't really say for sure. Whimsicott with that band, I don't... Do you switch it in? Because I don't know if you are if you are expecting to take any... I, I think if you're going to take damage, it's not going to be enough to KO, so you would kind of be wasting out that focus Sash, but I think that's going to be the play regardless. I wonder what he's going to try to get with this here. I feel like this is another standoff situation where there is really no right play. You just got to try to figure out what your opponent might have been trying to accomplish here. But with that Protect coming out, can't same surprise. Encore is in play though. Yeah, I think, I think maybe that's the reason to bring out Whimsicott and maybe why we saw the Protect from Volcarona there. 
is this Whimsicott comes out, and now you can't Quiver Dance with Volcarona. If you get that Quiver Dance and then you get Encore into Quiver Dance, you're just sitting there setting up but not being able to <sighs> fire back. So we'll see what happens here. That Snarl is very annoying. It's going to lower the special attack of everything. Really makes Volcarona have, be forced to almost switch out sooner rather than later. The one interesting thing with Whimsicott, Whimsicott is not an attacker. Whimsicott's right. job is to sit there and be annoying. So it's a question of how soon do you want to deal with Whimsicott? Exactly. And one thing I'm also recognizing right now is with that Tailwind coming out from uh, Rowan's Whimsicott, uh, you know, Encore threatening both Pokemon on the side of Rhodes Field, and that's exactly why we're probably going to be seeing that switch out come out from now. You want something that you are happy with seeing do the same move over and over again, and Iron Hands is a pretty solid bet. So that's going to be the next Mon coming out. Terra onto the Chiyu, I believe. Uh, did he? Yes, that's going to be the Chiyu. Did he predict the switch in? Is he going to go for it? He might have. He might have read the Iron Hand switch in or the Maridon switch in. There's only two real Pokemon that you gotta worry about, right? They're yeah. both weak to ground, so I think that makes a lot of sense. But it's gonna protect itself, but was that from... Oh! Okay, so Chiyu hit into the Whimsicott. Yeah. All right. Actually, oh, no, to Encore Snarl. into the... I would assume it was Encore into the Volcarona there and try and reduce that Volcarona's offensive capabilities. Mm -hmm. But that Terra Ground, maybe he wants to force the Terra Water actually into the Iron Hands. Make the Iron Hands scared. Make the Iron mm -hmm. Hands overreact. And now that that Terra Ground is out, it's a really interesting play now. Do you, are you afraid? Is there any threat on the side of Rowan's field to Nick besides this Maridon and um, Iron Hands? Because the Volcarona requires at least one or two turns to really become something scary, especially you got a Terrapagos, you got a Chiyu. Not really worried about any of those moves coming up from that Volcarona until it's really too boosted. So I feel like as long as you get those heavy hitters gone, you have a lot less to worry about. And speaking of heavy hitters gone, the heavy hitters are coming out to play now. And the Hadron Engine, that's going to be the Quark Boost or Quark Drive onto the uh, Iron Hands as well. But. What did the Chiyu go for this turn? Did you get the lead? Tailwind's gonna come out and ensure that it's always gonna be acting first going forward through these next couple of turns, but it's gonna be another Snarl feeling out what the plays are gonna be coming out for and reducing the special attack. I like that play, but now with all of the threats and all those cards kind of laid on the table, it's time to make some decisions. Oh, Chiyu lives on 13 health! Oh my goodness. So that must mean that that knockout on Chiyu is a roll and is not guaranteed. That is scary to think about. Chiyu is here, locked into Snarl, so now the question is, do you keep Chiyu in and you keep Snarling, or do you switch to something else and for, and maybe keep Chiyu for the later end game? I'm noticing now, yeah, that is a choice scarf on the Chiyu. With the Tailwind coming into effect, I, you would wish it would be a choice specs at this point, just so you can get some more potency on your damage, but at least, hey, Nothing's gonna outspeed this guy with that cherry scarf into the tail end. So it's gonna get to at least do one more action before it might get KO'd. But with Maridon switching back into the Whimsicott, if he did go for the Terra Blast, it's not gonna be very effective here. But with that Snarl, Iron Hands is gonna dodge it with. Oh, the double oh, miss! Oh, how? I didn't even know it happened. Was it a low accuracy move? In any case, Moon yeah, I, do I think damage. Snarl is a 95% chance to hit, so you hate to see that double miss there. It's going to KO. The Absolutely crucial. I will double check to make sure that I am right with that 95% accuracy. <laughs> Chiyu is going to fall, and this is exactly what I'm talking about here. This is really a threat completely nullified for Rowan. There isn't really anything that threatens the... Uh, threatens the Maridon or Iron Hands to any degree that the Chiyu did. You still have the Terrapagos, as we saw with the Hyper Beam that it has. It's a pretty strong threat in and of itself, but without that Terra, you don't have to worry about the Star Storms or anything else. No, it's still a strong move, but it won't be spread. So the question is, do you lock in your Terra Star Storm knowing it won't be spread anymore? Or do you try and think of what else you can do that Moon Blast will do a ton of damage to that Iron Hands. Mm -hmm. Is this your chance to remove Iron Hands from the field? That is the question. It's using Drain Punch, and Drain Punch will just get it more health back if you don't deal with it sooner rather than later. 
I really like this kind of uh, switch of operations from Nick here. You lost your main uh, potent threat. You don't even really have to play too uh, trickily anymore. You just gotta start hitting. Start yeah. knocking Pokemon out. Do as much damage as you can. Give your opponent less options. And that's exactly what he's gonna do here. He's gonna take out the Whimsicott. That's just one less big problem to deal with. Your opponent only Nick's, only has three left. Um, but with that shell coming to play, it's going to significantly reduce the damage coming out, but it's gonna switch back out. That's gonna be the Volcarona coming out at the very least, and as well as the Maridon. Those are the Pokemon that are gonna be in play right now, facing down this Terrapagos and Whimsicott. Seeing now Volcarona coming out, I'm curious what kind of plays he could try to go for here. You don't want to go for anything... It's, it's, it's scary because he already knows about the Hyper Beam and yeah. it came out and came into play last time. I think it's just really going to be like a call-out game of are you going to Hyper Beam right now or not? And then yeah. getting the Protect off and then using uh, Quiver Dance when, he's, when you're expecting him to do something else. Well, right now that Terrapagos is locked into... Terra Star Storm. Oh, it's got exactly. the choice back on. You're absolutely right on that. Completely so do you, I think he's looking at making the switch here, switching into the Raging Bolt. I mean, Raging Bolt's really strong and a great counter for Moridon. It's bulky. It's a lot of damage. We'll see if Whimsicott stays in, what Whimsicott does here. I think it protected. Or no, it doesn't have protect, does it? Oh, it does. Okay. I'm not, I knew I'm not crazy. Does the protect? Here's the Terra. Terra's going to be going out onto the Moridon. Terra Electric, Electric. Moridon. This Moridon's going to start doing damage. More damage than it already has been, which is actually not a lot. I don't think this Moridon's hit anything yet, has it? Moridon's not hit anything yet. <laughs> I haven't seen how much damage this Moridon can do. And now we'll get a look at what it can really do. Mm -hmm. Terra Electric, Electric Electro wow. Drift. Not super effective. But it's still gonna be I mean, very actually harmful. Not very effective. It's not. That's still a ton of damage. All things considered, that's really, really solid damage. What's important as well about the um, Terra there is it's no longer Dragon type, which means those Dragon moves from Raging Bolt are no longer going to be a threat. So yeah. it's not very effective versus not very effective moves I've get from these Pokemon right now. I wouldn't be shocked if we actually see Maraidon leave here. It's locked into that Electro Drift. And as much as it did, maybe a quarter damage to that Raging Bolt, you don't want to stick in. You don't want Maridon to take more damage than necessary. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens here. Goes to the Tailwind, resetting up that speed stat, which is what Wimscott does here. It really gets control of the speed. There's the Electric Drift staying in. Coming out onto... Wimscott. Wimscott wants to get it out. Wimscott with the Focus Sash, exactly. it's still up, but you had to take it out. Focus Sash is still in play. Honestly, I forgot about that. He was protecting all those turns to make sure that it wouldn't be uh, taking any damage. But now that it's finally been cracked, it's going to go down. It's just the Terrapagos in play. Electroweb going to do some work to reduce the speed of this Pokemon. But I think the Tailwind is still up, Floor Rowan? Yeah, Nick re just reset up Tailwind. So now he has Tailwind plus minus one with Electroweb. Gotcha. It will be an interesting round here. So he's going to have the speed advantage now, but he wasn't working with it for quite a while. Terrapagos is going to be coming out, and now you're going to get the reset here. You're going to be able to choose between using your Star Storm or Hyper Beam. I, mm, I mean, with the Iron Hand still in play, a switch in would be pretty devastating. That's the Steel Electric type on the Iron Hands? Uh, no, Iron Hands is fighting, fighting Electric. Fighting Electric, okay. So, so really, going into Earth Power here, Locking in Earth Power is probably a great move here. Everything on this field is going to be weak to that Earth Power and not going to really want to take a big Earth Power. This Terrapagos is slower, so the question is, does Electro Drift one-shot? If Electro Drift doesn't one-shot, you're in a little bit of a scarier position. It actually probably will. Probably does. It's at a great... Yeah. There, no. Rhydon's leaving. Rhydon's getting out of town. It's going home. <laughs> So this could be the Earth Power play that we were expecting to come out, but it is low, so I guess it's the call out of did you not go for anything here and you just get to take it out for free. So that's just like absorbing one hit, allowing another turn for Volcarona to get something done while forcing the move to go onto a different Pokemon. Um, Electroweb is going to come out once more, reduce the speed of that Volcarona, but I'm curious, did it go for Quiver Dance or did it go for some damage? Quiver Dance, it wants Quiver to dance. try to get some damage in here. It's probably going to go down next turn, so I think it just wants to go down 
with a fight. He's gonna get some speed, but I'm pretty sure it's still gonna be too slow. Oh, yeah, that, that Volcarona is still at a minus one. As much as Volcarona's Leftovers. speed stat is, is really high, not as high as some of the other threats it's gotta go up against. I saw Tailwind Peter out. I'm assuming that would be Rowan if Nyx was the more recent one coming out. Electric Terrain is going to come into play once more, increasing the electric type damage. And now you're just kind of scoping out, getting a feel for what might work, what might not. No status changes except for that Volcarona, which is still minus one on the speed, but plus to the special defense and attack. So it actually might, I, I might have spoken a little too soon, it might actually survive some attacks here this turn. It might be able to get out one or two more attacks before it goes down. And those are plus one attacks as well. These trainers putting a lot of thought into the next play, and I really can't blame you when you consider all that's on the line here today. But the Star Storm coming out, taking down the Maridon. Wow. Such a strong Pokemon. This is the impact of getting to go first. Some might say speed is everything. Doesn't matter how good your Pokemon is, if it doesn't get to act, Electro Web coming out once again onto this Volcarona. And I think another. And Volcarona game. versus the World Tier. Volcarona's gonna keep trying to Quiver Dance. Get to a position where it can knock out something. If it wasn't but, for the Electrowebs, it actually might have been able to pull something off here. But the fact that it's going to have to act the last every turn makes it really difficult. Yeah. And we'll probably see the Protect from Volcarona this turn. Maybe. I think Tailwind is up for at least one more turn here, so we'll see what they oh, do. Oh, that's true. There's the Protect. Trying to bait out that Tailwind. 249 onto the Raging Volk. What's the speed of Volcarona? 271. I don't know. Would it be faster with the minus one? I don't think so. I'd be very surprised. But only time will tell. Yeah, I think with the minus one, it it will be close. It will be close on a lot of these Pokemon. I don't think it will be faster than Raging Bolt. But it's also getting special defense buffs as well. True. So do you go for another Quiver Dance then? I think you have to start attacking. Yeah, I really think so. But at the same time, it is... Because if you want to get greedy, you could go for another Quiver Dance into Protect and then start attacking. But that is... That's really stretching it. Yeah, I think you've really got to start hitting through. And you've got to find a way. Okay, so Trap goes still faster. faster. Doesn't get the knockout, but that Electro Web might. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So. That's going to do it for round two. Nick taking the 2-0 victory. I'm sure that the speed were just single digits within each other um maybe maybe a couple of tens here and there but it i it that game came down to a lot of different factors the tailwinds the priorities the speeds the the typings the special stats and the defenses so close of a game and you can see it in the face of the trainers there it was a very close very hard fought battle but ultimately today nick is going to come out on top yeah I, I wouldn't be shocked if we see more of these players down the line this weekend. They both played incredibly well. These are both very interesting, exciting teams. As much as it was a 2-0 victory, that was not a close game. That second round was not a close game. Both these players fought back-to-back -back incredibly hard. And I'm excited to see where they go in the future. And this is a great representation for the rest of the weekend on the power of Maridon and the power of Terrapagos. That Maridon, it gets the Electro Drift, which if it hits into something super effectively, it does a ton of damage. And then we're looking at the power of Terrapagos, even without Terra, there's still 120 base power, special attack, Terra Star Storm that's going to... Can't miss! Exactly. It's the power it's... of some of these uh, super strong moves like Solar Beam. Like, <laughs> it's got that power level and can't miss and will just keep hitting as hard as possible. And one thing we didn't even account for, like, we didn't even see those uh, Star Storms coming out with the spread. That was just single target. And it was still such a huge threat that game all around. Like you said, just because it was a 2-0 doesn't mean that those games were one-sided at all. They were still very, very close for both trainers. And ultimately, again, Nick is going to come out on top. But that's going to be Swiss round two kind of coming to a conclusion. I'm sure there might be a couple of games still going on outside, but while we get ready, get prepared for round three, we're going to send it to a quick break, ladies and gentlemen. But again, the action is just getting started. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you all very soon.